Welcome to the City Show. Pat O'Neill, here. You there? That's why I do the show. Because you're there. I try to inform you, educate you, entertain you a little bit. Spring is finally getting here, even though we have some pretty cold nights. Uh, don't forget, before I start rambling along here, don't forget everything you see at the bottom of the screen. Love us on uh, Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. And don't forget uh, Vimeo live stream. That's where we archive all our shows. So when you have zero life, you can go back and look at all our old shows. And plus, there's a lot of other programming. Um, where it looks like we're returning back to radio. I'm teaching juniors and seniors studio production in hopes that these kids will get scholarships. If not, they'll be trained well enough to work in these major studios that are opening in the immediate area. We already have one at Sinaloa in Jersey City. Uh, one of the aspects I want to bring in is uh, radio to these kids where they can call football games, baseball games. So we're working on that now. So there's a lot of things changing here. Um, let's get to the show. Michael Yoon. You remember Michael Yoon? He was a councilman in Ward D. Um, started out running uh, Garden State News on Central Avenue. He was a deputy mayor for a while under Brett Shundler. Ran for council, won, then ran again, was reelected. Um, he died of COVID about four years ago. There was a statue erected in his honor on Bowers Street, right on the corner of Bowers and Central by his store. But down on the Bowers side, I don't know, maybe about 25 feet off Central Avenue going east, somebody vandalized it. They ripped off his glasses. When it was put there, the statue, I thought, that's probably not the best spot for that. You needed him and his statue on Central Avenue. Ideally, and we probably don't have any CCTV footage of what happened there. Ideally, the best thing to do with Michael Yoon's uh, statue is to move it again. And we're good at moving statues, just at Christopher Columbus. We move things right all the time. Peter Stuyvesant, we're good at that. Um, move them across the street to Central. Same, right on the same intersection, Bowers and uh, Central. But put them in front of the old trust company bank. With this way, we know we have CCTV on them. Because, you know, if it sits on Bower Street, there's going to be other vandalism there. Plus, it's kind of like you have Mike sitting on a bench across from his store, looking at his old store, the Garden State News, where it all began for him and his family. So I think that's appropriate. Uh, it wouldn't be a big deal to move it. The DPW can surely handle that. Um, I don't know how damaged the uh, statue is itself and where they broke off his glasses. Now, they were part of the uh, the stone. So hopefully that can be repaired uh, to a, a degree of uh, normal there. And we have a, a decent statue recognizing the contributions of uh, Michael Yoon, especially on Central Avenue in the Heights. What are we going to talk about today? We're going to go to Hoboken today. Hoboken, where they give not a damn for your money, if you live in Hoboken. They Their budget they agreed to, I think, a 5.9% increase. 6%. And the school budget looks like it's coming in at 15%. So that's like a 21% increase for the people of Hoboken. We'll get into that. We're going to talk about CarePoint. They are basically on life support. And then we're going to get to New Jersey City University. And then I'll go home. All right, let's break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, Jersey City. Hudson County's only monument maker, serving all faiths and cemeteries. Design studio and launch inventory on site. Cemetery inscriptions and custom orders welcome. Burns Brothers, Memorials, Monuments, and Markers, 787 Tunnelly Avenue, just south of Seacorkers Road. Craftsmanship that will last for all eternity. Burns Brothers, Jersey City, Albert H. Hopper, North Arlington. Visit us on the net. Hannah Pinto Properties, Jersey City, shaping the workplace with state-of-the-art office spaces and addresses your company desires. Building residences that define your home environment, adjacent to all modes of transportation with on-site parking available. The right address, the right lease. 
Call 201-521-9000 or visit online at panapintodevelopment.com. Panapinto Properties, building Jersey City for everyone. We're back. You're watching The City Show. Pat Amelia here, my ever-present styrofoam cup of coffee. Yes, styrofoam. You don't see that in Jersey City anymore. Or in New Jersey, for that matter. I get them from Amazon. As I was saying with Hoboken, they just approved their budget and probably one of the shortest council meetings ever. It went about, I think about 10 minutes, and they approved the 6% minute, uh, six percent tax increase. Good thing it wasn't like a two-hour meeting. It would have had like a 120% tax increase. Yeah, here's the problem. And again, what I said before in the intro, uh, the school's looking at about a 15% increase. Is there any, in any of these conversations, was there any effort made to offset? Yeah, the school tax is a tough one. But was there any shot at offsetting the 6%? Was it any of the council people start smashing on the, the day of saying, we can't do this. We have to be respectful of the people of Hoboken. You know, it, every year there's another increase. You know, did, did, did they attempt to even did, did they cut the budget at all? You know, Lee Iacocca, he was a tremendous uh, industrialist, um, invented the Ford Mustang that was his design back in 1964, uh, took over the Chrysler Corporation when they were on the brink of bankruptcy, developed a K car, and that K car was, every Chrysler product was a diversion, a uh, derivative of uh, the K car. And brought it back to solvency, paid back the loan that they borrowed from the government to keep Chrysler solvent. Guy, you know, he's a guy that renovated the Statue of Liberty, you know, master businessman. He once said he could cut any budget 10%. Why the F don't we ever do that? Now, look at Hoboken here, 6%. You couldn't cut 6% of the budget instead of going, you know what's going on with the school, instead of going to the people again and say, we're just going to hit you. Yeah, did, did, did the whole book, did they try to cut the budget? Did they try to, to do uh, shared services? Did they try to do anything to offset the increase? Did they talk to Jersey City about shared services, about the DPW department or health departments or uh, cultural affairs, whatever friggin' department they could have possibly discussed shared services with? Did they do it? Did they do it with Jersey City? Did they do it with Union City? They try to do it with the County of Hudson? No. No attempt. Just reach into your pocket. Here's a small city. Um, I think it's what, 17 blocks long, Hoboken? Uh, very dense, very densely populated. But it's a small city. In some surveys, Hoboken comes out as uh, the most expensive city to rent an apartment in the nation. This little postage stamp city. I think it's 17, what well, they call the mile square city, but I think it's 17 blocks long. No. <laughs> Did they try to get off the number one spot? No. Here's a city that is struggling with rent control. I don't know how you can struggle with rent control when you keep digging into the pockets of the property owners. 6% here, you got 15% coming with the school. How the hell can you not have a rent control problem? You know, the property owners here, especially when it gets to the mom and pops, they didn't buy a two-family home or a three-family home to create affordable housing. They made family wealth, generational wealth, uh, property they could leave to their children to guarantee a good future for them, not to create affordable housing, but that's the problem. You can't have affordable housing in Hoboken if you just jack the taxes up 21%. Almost six, 5.9 from the municipality, and it's looking at 15% state uh, for, this, for their school. And I even, I said the state just jumped out. I don't know if the state's going to raise anything there. I think they are going to raise taxes to the state. I don't know where the county is, but it just doesn't look good for Hoboken. So it stopped the lip service about rent control and affordable housing because the people who are on the council and the mayor, they don't seem to give a crap about that. They wouldn't. They, 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 if they would try to offset these things, then you could see that they care. But they don't. They're just going to dig into your pocket. So people will be moving out of Hoboken. Or the rents will become so friggin' high that nobody's going to be able to afford Hoboken. You look at 
North Bergen with Nicholas Sacco and pull up in Jersey City. You don't see the municipal budgets going up 6%. You know, in, in North Bergen, it's like 1%, maybe. If the big one, it would be 2%. You don't see that in Hoboken, 6%. You look at Jersey City. Now, Jersey City's had some tax increases, but the school board is out of control. And uh, the mayor really got it. I, I suggested the mayor, they withhold the uh, the school money that's collected through the property taxes until we can drag the state kicking and screaming in here to do something about the Jersey City Board of Education. But municipal wise, you don't see Philip jacking it up 6%. Yeah, you, know, you got a mayor, Robbie Bala, who's running for 8th District um, uh, Congress. What kind of votes is he expecting to get out of Hoboken when they're about to receive a 21% tax increase? It's going to be a long uh, campaign here. But you may not have Hoboken to fall back on. For that matter, we're uh, producing uh, the 8th District debate. John Highness from Hudson County View Live. We produce his show uh, every Wednesday at around noontime live. Uh, on May the 28th at 6 o'clock, you'll have a live debate. Um, Robin Enders Jr., Robbie Bala, and the third guy. Uh, he, he seemed to be almost invisible for a while, but then, then he popped up. He was in a Jersey Journal front page and a two-page spread. Um, the thing is with Hoboken, well, let me break the commercial. We'll pick up at Hoboken, and then we'll jump into the next one. If you're watching The City Show, I'll be right back. I've got cancer. We've got the highest level of cancer care. The latest clinical trials. Researchers working to find a cure. And there's navigators to guide you every step of the way. At New Jersey's only NCI-designated Comprehensive Cancer Center, your safety has always been our top priority. I've got cancer, but I also have peace of mind. Jersey City Medical Center and Rutgers Cancer Institute of New Jersey. Let's beat cancer together. Good Friend Self Storage in North Bergen, New Jersey is a fully climate controlled facility equipped with state of the art security, packing supplies, a refer friend program, and multiple loading docks convenient for commercial use. Located just off of Route 3 at 4301 Tunnelly Avenue, Route 1 and 9. Call 201 867 2444 or visit us on the web today. Good Friend Self Storage, let us be your good friend. Consumer Carpets, 3408 Kennedy Boulevard in the Jersey City Heights, your one-stop store for residential and commercial floor treatments. Carpeting, linoleum, tiles, laminates, hardwood floors, area rugs, remnants, all major brands, all in stock. Free estimates, same-day installation. Consumer Carpets, it's savings, selection, installation. Credit cards and debit cards accepted. Financing available. Consumer Carpets, price to fit your budget, installation to fit your schedule. On the net at ConsumerCarpets.com. Consumer Carpets, Jersey City, 201-792-2712. Pat O'Neill, you here, City Show. Before we jump off from uh, Hoboken and get into CarePoint, what did the residents of Hoboken even get for their tax dollar? You know, when it rains in Hoboken, it's friggin' biblical. ShopRite gets flooded, you know, the, the whole town gets flooded. Daily, the infrastructure, whether it's the water or sewer, breaks. It's like, you know, water's shooting out of the friggin' streets. And then the Band-Aid Brigade pops up and they tape it up and, oh, we did the job. And the following day, the main goes again. You know, unlike Jersey City, where they, like every block's getting new sewers and a water main. You don't see that in Hoboken. I don't even know what they get for their money. But it is ridiculous that there's a 6% increase coming municipal and 15% school. And nobody that you elected seems to give a damn. On to CarePoint, which includes Hoboken, by the way. CarePoint Health System has requested $120 million from the state of New Jersey. Um, I don't see that happening. CarePoint is, is getting very dry, dire there. It's almost like you got the hand reaching out of the water, you know, the drowning victim, and they're, they're hoping to grab $120 million. It ain't going to happen. Not going to happen. Uh, it is time that action be taken here. Each week, the situation with CarePoint, the three hospitals, Bayonne Hospital, Christ Hospital in Jersey City, Hoboken University Hospital in Hoboken, gets bleaker and bleaker. 
There are rumors of missed payrolls, doctors haven't been paid, numerous uh, vendor unpaid invoices, rents unpaid, blah, 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 blah. They are in dire straits. And they keep making these announcements. They went from for-profit to not-for-profit and where uh, so, 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 all these new departments. None of this is happening. You know, it's almost like they're trying to divert. They are in a serious situation here. And it is a very difficult situation as to who owns the hospitals, who owns the dirt, who has this. The whole ownership is still in question. Um, there's another company coming in inside. I think they're already here. I think they're uh, overseeing, they're monitoring what's going on with the hospital. Uh, it is time that our elected leaders in Hudson County and the three home uh, cities for the hospital get up and take some action here. Action needs to be taken. If we're going to save these three hospitals so the people of Hudson County can have a medical choice, then action needs to be taken. We just can't keep wishing and hoping that something's going to change. The state, the county, and the three uh, home cities for these hospitals need to get together and take action. Um, first off, the present leadership has to go. You know, it, it, it's gone too far. They have to go. The county, Bayonne, Jersey City, and Hoboken, and the state to a degree, have to get together. The not-for-profit that they formed is fine. You can, they can operate the not-for-profit. The, the county and the three municipalities are going to get seats on the board. I've said this before. In this way, the county and the cities have their hand on the steering wheel to stop the hospital from driving off the cliff. And they're, they're, their tires are right at the edge of the cliff there. I spoke before of a merger where the three hospitals, again, Bayonne, Christ Hospital, and Hoboken University, would merge with the county-owned Meadowview Hospital. With the county on the board and the three municipalities, you can start integrating the hospitals into um, the municipality and the county's health departments, uh, their senior centers, their community centers providing health care. The city would, you know, reimburse them because we, we have uh, medical professionals who do visit these sites. Uh, there are a lot of things we can do to guarantee the financial stability of these three hospitals. Again, they're not supposed to be making money. They got to break even. But they got to pay the doctors. They got to pay the bills, all that. And you want to get money from the state? The county can do it better than most, especially the county with three municipalities behind it. They can deal with the state. Integrating the hospital with all the health departments in those three cities and the county, you can get reimbursed. That is a thing with the jail situation. Or at medical services, we can have it. The hospital do the uh, the medical intakes there. There's a lot of potential medical business in Hudson County that could be driven to Christ Hospital, Bayonne Hospital, and Hoboken. We just have to work at it. You know that's part of our ambulance. You realize, right? We we have no ambulance service in Jersey City. Jersey City doesn't have any. Yeah, you know, we depend on the Jersey City Medical Center and Christ Hospital. I almost bet you right now, the Med Center is probably doing ninety percent of the hospital, of the ambulance calls. We need to secure the future of these three hospitals. And Fulop in Jersey City, Davis in Hoboken, and Ballerin, uh, now Davis and Bayonne and Ballerin, Hoboken, and Craig Guy in the county have to get together and say, we got to make some moves. We got to have our hands on the steering wheel. Yeah, you know, like I said, the munis can get money out of um, this state of far easier. Like I said, present management's got to go by. I would go out and try to get Joe Scott, the former head of the Jersey City Medical Center, who saved that hospital from bankruptcy, to head up this new hospital system, the three hospitals in Meadowview, at least get the hospitals on the right track. You know, Joe's somewhere in his late 60s, early 70s. I would get Joe on board to get this hospital on the right path. And again, integrate as much as we can with the hospitals into the, the, the municipalities and the county and, of course, the, the people, the residents of Hudson County. Like I said, wishing and hoping ain't going to do it. All right, we're going to break for commercial. You're watching The City Show. I'll be right back.
Jersey City Medical Center has a passion for heart health. We're Hudson County's only full-service heart hospital with innovative technologies and premier cardiovascular physicians, a partnership with Rutgers Health, the latest technology and medical advancements, and nationally renowned care for every heart in every community. Whoever your heart beats for, our hearts beat for you. Jersey City Medical Center. Newport, the luxury waterfront community on the Hudson River offers a quality of life you deserve in one of our many high-rise towers. With amenities such as the on-site Newport Path, light rail, Newport Town Square, three playgrounds, dog run, upscale restaurants, retail giants like Kohl's, J.C. Penney, Macy's, and Target. Morton Williams and Acme Supermarket are just outside your front door. A health and fitness center, skating rink, and medical facilities are also on site. Enjoy the New York skyline from our waterfront and various parks. Manhattan is just one path stop away or a quick ride through the Holland Tunnel. Nursery and private elementary schools all on site. 12 screen movie theater at the Newport Center Mall. Looking to visit? Stay at the Westin or Marriott Hotel. For more information, visit us at NewportNJ.com. Make lasting memories to cherish forever. It's incredible. It's you, Newport. Live like you want. Jersey City Medical Center is healing, enhancing, and investing in Hudson County because your heart doesn't beat just for you. So get it checked. When your bones are healthy, it lifts us all. We're delivering joy daily in our Lord Abbott Maternity Wing and providing New Jersey's only NCI-designated comprehensive cancer center. We'll continue building our medical network and taking every precaution for your safety so that we can all be healthy together. you here, you there. We've discussed Hoboken. We've discussed Care Point. Hoboken, Care Point, a pretty serious situation there, especially when it comes to Care Point. And let's talk, to, talk about what was a really serious situation. New Jersey City University, the old state teachers college, which before that was called the normal school. And what I always say is a big plaque, the normal school. And that's where they taught teachers. Somewhere along the line became teachers, state teachers college. Now it is, of course, New Jersey City University. Uh, last week, the president of the university was in studio guesting on Stick Show, Stick at Night. Stick is uh, Anthony Romano, the Hudson County Commissioner for Jersey City in Hoboken. He's been doing Stick at Night pretty much for as long as I've been pretty much in television. Um, probably going on like 20 years now. Um, Andres uh, Acebo is the new president. And we got to talking in between takes. And at the end of the show, about the future of, of the university, you read the papers, well, there's got to be some sort of a merger, Kane University or Montclair, Rutgers partnering or taking over New Jersey City University. And for a while, yeah, that seemed like the only alternative. But when you talk to the kid, Acebo, the president, young guy, uh, his budget's in order. Yeah, they're on the path to solvency. And there was a time New Jersey City University was solvent. They had money. They had like a, you know, a surplus of 130, 140, 100, whatever, $150 million. And then there was a lot of bad management uh, from the school, the, the school president um, and the uh, board. Uh, if you recall, when all this was falling apart, uh, even back with uh, A. Harry Moore School, when uh, they were basically trying to back out of uh, their agreement with A. Harry Moore School on uh, the boulevard right across from the, uh, New Jersey City University, I had problems with the management then. I've always had problems with the expansion. Well, what they did with under the past administrations, uh, they expanded New Jersey City University into Monmouth County. Uh, they opened uh, locations on the waterfront. I don't know what the hell we're doing in Monmouth County, but that was the decision they made. Yes, let's find the most expensive real estate we can find and rent it on the Jersey City waterfront. 
Then they got into development deals on the west side of Jersey City, and none of that worked out. And almost like immediately that 130, 140, 150 million dollar surplus was gone, and they were in the hole, and they kept getting digger, deeper and deeper. Um, the CBO comes in, the new president there, and in very short order, he's got things stabilized. And like I said, it looks like his budget is balanced. You know, maybe we sit back and say, well, maybe you hold off on uh, these merges with Keene or Montclair or Rutgers, you know, uh, Ramapo, whatever state university we can drag into it and give this kid some time. We're already in a hole as it is, and the state's going to have to help dig that hole out. I think we give this kid a few years, because you just sit and talk to him. For that matter, he's going to be guesting with uh, John Highness on our other production I produce, uh, Hudson County View Live Wednesday at noon. Um, he's guesting this week with uh, John. So if you don't catch it live, you can uh, catch it on YouTube and you know all our streaming channel. Uh when you watch this kid, yeah, you get the idea that he knows what he's doing. And I think with Acebo in place, I think the future of New Jersey City University is a hell of a lot brighter than it was a year or two. Because the kid has a plan. Uh, he's well-spoken. Uh, he certainly you will know, get along with everyone. And he's got them going down the right path. So before we completely blow up the situation and have it become an extension of Kane or whatever state university, remember, it is our only local uh, university, public university in Hudson County. You know, we got St. Peter's, uh, and of course, we got Hudson County Community College. That's probably, I, I keep reading where they're doing deals with Hudson County Community College. We should probably get more information out. Uh, I, I think the media hasn't been fair with the SIBO here since he's taken over. But everything he spoke to me about seemed very logical, seemed like the right thing to do. And I think if we give this guy two, three years, he will have New Jersey City University on the right road. It'll be solvent. Um, enrollment will be up. Because like I said before, this was a successful school until... You know, the thoughts are, let's go to Monmouth County with an ex expansion of Monmouth Mom County. Let's go to the Jersey City waterfront and open up spaces down there. Yeah, the most expensive part of the city. Let's go down there where an acre of land goes for like $47 million. Yeah, there was a lot of bad management decisions. I don't think this kid, the SIBO, is going to make any of those bad management decisions. So I, I'm going to, you know, to all the state representatives that come in the studio when I talk, I'm going to basically say, I'd pump the brakes on these merges and takeovers or what have you and give this kid two or three years to right this ship. And I think, I don't know who hired him, who found him. They did a good job. Whoever vetted this guy or, you know, again, it's guy. I keep calling him a kid. A lot younger than I am. I got a good 30 years on him. Uh, whoever found him did a good job. And I think we, the county of Hudson, the state of New Jersey, we need to give him time. So remember, uh, like I said, he's on Stick at Night. Uh, I think that show may be up on our uh, YouTube uh, if you're watching this now. And he'll be live with John Highness uh, Wednesday at noontime. So right now, I am at a show. You be good. You be safe. I'll talk to you during the week. Good night.